Hey everybody, Josh Bentley, developer advocate for SAP, working on our developer relations team, trying to help everybody in the SAP community learn how to develop on SAP code. With that being said, this is part of the Devtoberfest enablement. One of the things we're talking about this week is Project Kima. We've had some other videos showing you how to enable your own Kima clusters and running Kubernetes with the open source Project Kima. What I wanted to do today was instead of having to deploy that locally using Minikube, show you how you could actually take your Kima system and deploy it on top of SAP's other major open source project with Kubernetes called Gardener. So Project Kima, as you know, is part of Devtoberfest. We have several enablement videos and things that you can actually find on the website on GitHub. But today I wanted to point you to a couple other websites. One is Gardener.cloud. This is where you can learn about our managed Kubernetes service. So Kubernetes on demand, Kubernetes as a service, the Kubernetes botanist where you're growing these clusters in a garden and you're actually going to be able to manage how you deploy your Kubernetes systems to all of your users. And I'll show you how to connect up a few different hyperscalers and where you can have the infrastructure be something that you don't have to think about when you're deploying applications either on top of Kubernetes or through Kima. You're actually deploying your applications and you don't even know that Gardner is actually managing the infrastructure for you. So the next uh, web page I'll point out here is under the documentation. We have lots of things to help you get started, build your own Gardner system. Um, Gardner is something that SAP can host as well, but this has got tutorials and how-to guides and different concepts that you can browse through as you're exploring Project Gardner. For Project Kima, we have version 1.15, which is the latest out, and I've highlighted here how to install it on a cluster. <clears throat> One of the important things about installing a cluster is knowing what kind of cluster you're going on to. Is it going to be AWS? Is it going to be Google Cloud? Is it going to be Azure? And in doing so, I went and I'm going to have a couple I'm going to deploy for you today. I just jotted down some notes and I put them into my text editor showing me which Kubernetes version to use and what size that that actual system needed to be. So I'll jump back into that later, but I wanted to make sure that as you're building, it's good to have the notes about what the minimum system requirements are to the side. Um, and that's really it on the prerequisites, which you're going to have to actually understand when you're deploying on a Kima on top of Gardener. When it comes to the Kubernetes login, I've got a system, a Gardener system from SAP that I use for demos, and I'm going to log into that real quick. Once this pops up, you'll see that I've got some different projects that I've actually been working on, and these are actually built in an area called projects. I can create a new project or I can go to an existing one. So if I go to my European project section, this could be, for example, developers that are based in Europe. If I wanted to add a cluster to this, I would hit the plus symbol down here and I'll be adding a cluster into my European development area. Uh, these are all just names that I made up, but I could actually go in and have logistics based applications. And so everything to do with a logistics apps developer would be put into this space if I chose and it would be applied to any of multiple hyperscalers that I wanted to put it with. Now let's go to the one that I built earlier called DevTobeFest. So in DevTobeFest, we've got a cluster set up. It's uh, named Aristotle, which is a great philosopher, and it's running on AWS. So I'll go through and show you how all these options here got put in, the API status, uh, how we have a created cluster, and how we put it into the right system from AWS. What I want to do is I want to go in, I'm going to do a, uh, another one, let's call it uh, Tober, just to pick a name I haven't used yet. So let's go back here to our clusters, uh, our new projects before we add a cluster. And let's call this one Tober. And call center, I'm not going to put one because I'm going to build this against our demo system. So it's automatically going to map out. Down here, I'll put Tober again. And then I'll put demo for DevToberFest with GCP. All right, create that creates that project and it pops up and says, hey, I need your secrets, your secret user IDs that are going to map between the billing infrastructure of AWS, Microsoft, Google, OpenStack, if you're doing something local, or Alibaba. So these are five systems that we've actually mapped Gardner to manage. So credential management, user management, that's all hidden from the administrator when they start to deploy applications on top of a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, for this one, I want to use Google because I had the AWS system set up already, and I've already got a trial secret in here. If I do Azure, for example, it's going to ask me for my Azure secret. I'm going to have to map out a personal secret. Instead of doing that, I've already preloaded a Google secret. So let's go ahead and click on that one and say, here's my secret. And 
I want to go to the clusters and add that one with that secret. So here's some tiles that map out to those secrets that have already been pre-added under GCP. I do not want to use this cluster name. It's just a random name that it gives you so you don't have two clusters that match and conflict. Let's call this one Plato um, DV for Devtoberfest because I might have used Plato earlier just to be safe. Kubernetes version, check my notes again. Uh, it's got to be 1.15 or higher up to 1.17. So let's go with 1.17 in service, not preview and not deprecated. Here we go, supported. Evaluation purpose, that's it for the cluster details. Infrastructure details, trial secret that I referenced earlier is going to be the one that I use in Europe West. I could choose other regions if I wanted to based on where my apps are going to live, my developers, maybe I want to put in a different region for certain services. In this case, I'm staying put. Uh, worker, I need to change the machine type. Check our notes again. Minimum of two nodes, four CPUs, 16 gigabytes each. Recommended three to five. Well, for this demo, let's just pick the next one down, which is N1 standard four, four CPUs, 15 gig of memory. Sounds like the right one. Let me check that N1 standard four for Google against my notes. N1 standard four, perfect. And scroll down, keep the rest there. Let's turn on the dashboard and the ingress. Maintenance time 11 p.m., that's fine. It's local time um, for me, Eastern's time zone. I'm gonna wake this one up at 4 a.m. every day. And that gives me the ability basically to have this thing go to sleep and stop spinning uh, cycles on the infrastructure that it's hosted on. Monday through Friday, if I wanted to, I could actually add another day, like Saturday or Sunday, to the schedule. I'll click outside those check marks. Now I've got all seven days of the week, but I can turn off Saturday and Sunday that quick just by exiting them out. I'm going to go ahead now and click Create in the lower right-hand corner. It's going to go through and say, OK, I've created your cluster. Now, it's going to spin for a little while. I don't know if it's going to be fast enough to build this while I'm actually recording. So what I'm going to do is jump over out of Plato, and I'm going to go over to Aristotle and check him out. He's running on AWS, and it's a Google cluster system that I already set up. So let's click our drop-down menu here and jump to our project, which is called DevToBest. Here's Aristotle. Now Aristotle's running, and he's got a cluster that's going to self-terminate in seven days. That's part of the advantage of using a development system like this that is for test purposes. All your developers out there that are throwing apps and saying, I'm going to just throw these into my Kubernetes system and host them on whatever hyperscaler I'm using, they might not set in the console and auto turn off like this. So this self-termination will, will help me save money and management of clusters that are basically being abandoned when they're not being used because you decide to go and build a different size server the next time and put some different applications out there. Um, to look at the other details here, we've got the Kubernetes version that was mentioned earlier that I had to use to put Kima and the purpose evaluation, the SLAs against this Gardner system. And this is all community software that is being hosted again through the the project gardener now we have sap helping to maintain this and manage it as a offering that we give people and you can get that through the sap cloud platform that's a higher level version than what we're doing here which is playing with the gardener version that's basically being hosted as an open source if i look at my terminal here i can open a terminal into the cluster i have a dashboard with tokens if i want to view the uh, hidden token i just hit this here you can look at that i don't mind you guys seeing this on the recording because it's going to be dead in less than seven days so the other thing I can do is go down to my Q config. I can download that. I have logging and monitoring. I've got my infrastructure again. I could open a ticket if I needed to for the people who are managing this console. And then I've got my pod addresses. What's also really cool is I have external tools. Now this is where I'm pretty much done. This one's already up and running and hosted. And if I wanted to show you that it's already up and running, I can see that my create has succeeded. I have API readiness, that's healthy. I've got my nodes that are healthy and my system components. So everything is good with this cluster so I can actually deploy stuff to it. Oh, the other thing, some people like to look at the YAML file. So you can just tap on this YAML tab and you can actually see all the YAML information. So all these things that are going into this cluster are just listed in a huge YAML file for you. Go back to my overview and scroll down and look at my Kubernetes application and services hub. This is going to pop out and give me a really nice section where I can add other things into my Gardner Kubernetes clusters. So what I've got is an application section, cluster bombs, and a catalog. So I don't have any apps deployed yet, 
So let's jump over to my catalog. So here, first thing up is Kima, which is what we want to show today. But I've got some other things out here that I could actually push into this cluster. Lots of different things in this catalog. But we're going to scroll back up to the top and we're going to click on Kima. We see it's the most current version, 1.15, which if I go back to my Kima tab, I can see the latest right there. There are different versions that you may want to deploy and play with. I would not do anything lower than 1.14. 1.14, uh, 1.15 are the ones that we're using for our Devtoberfest systems. And then when I jump back over here to the hub dashboard, I'm still attached because I click this in my Aristotle cluster. So it was important that I named this something I would remember. Project Cluster Aristotle. And now in my hub dashboard, I'm in my cluster Aristotle. So now anything I deploy into the system is automatically mapped there, even though I had those other project workspaces. So I've got a namespace that comes in handy for when you want to deploy this. You can go to default or different areas of your namespace. We're just going to use default for this. And I could set a username and password, but I'm going to let the system generate a default one. And once it generates those, I'll be able to put them and see them in the URL. So I have Kima descriptions, how to, a little bit of just, you know, how do I log in? The things I mentioned earlier about getting a password with a secret in there. That's perfect. Let's deploy it. Over here, it gives me a name, version. If I want to change that, I could. I'm not going to. Everything looks good here. Scroll down to the bottom. Uh, please select a namespace. Use namespace at the top. I guess I didn't click default. There we go. Scroll down, hit submit. Now it's going to start deploying it. So what's going to happen is this is going to generate a username and a password for me. I didn't do that earlier. I could have put them in on my own, but it's going to actually develop those in the secrets. Once that's done, I'll have an admin password that pops up, cluster URL, and right here I can check my status of what it's doing. So just to recap real quick, what we've done is we've got Gardner running. <coughs> we've got a couple of different things. We've got Tober, and then we've got DevTobe Fest. So in this one, we got AWS. We don't have Kima deployed to this one. We actually went over to that new cluster that we spun up, Tober, with the cluster name of Plato, excuse me, the project with the cluster name of Plato. And then we actually said, let's go to the external tools and let's grab Kima. So we click this link, opened up our hub dashboard. Now if I go back to my applications, I see that Kima is actually deployed now against this cluster. So you may say, I want to actually deploy now an app or a YAML file or something into that. Well, the console is building up. You click uh, once it's done. So you can actually check the status again by going over here. And you will see, excuse me, go here, click on Kima. You'll see when it's done, it'll pop up here and show you that you can actually open up the console. And I'm going to jump over to an already open console just to show you what it looks like. So here's our Kima when it's fully up and running. This will look similar to the one that you could run locally against Minikube. Um, I have a namespace called DevToberfest. I've got my deployments and pods here. Nothing is deployed. So let's go ahead and deploy a resource. Uh, I've got a file down here, just a simple YAML file. And drop that in. Click deploy. We watch our deployment spin up. The pods start to spin up based on the requirements that were set. And all that's in the actual uh, YAML I can show you. Deployments are spinning and they look like they're done. I can click on deployments. I see here everything's good. And then I go back to my namespace. Click on DevToberfest to see that my pods 2 of 2 are up and running. So it gives me my status. It shows me everything about these two. And Go back here into my namespace. I can see I've got no bound applications. A couple of these, we do have bound applications. So if I click here and I go in, I can look at all the API rules, the OAuth clients, permissions. Maybe I want to add some admins to this. I can create a binding. I can uh, enter a group or a kind. So I'm going to do a role. I'm going to do an admin. Let's, uh, let's first name this uh, philosophy of philosophers. And then let's go into the role, cluster role, admin, and save that. So now I've got a new admin group of permissions against this application inside of this cluster. So I can go through and look at my resources that are assigned. And if I wanted to, I could bond some functions. 
So if I'm going to create a function up here, create a label with a key value. So again, fully functional schema. And this is going to be deployed against my Kubernetes system that is running on Gardener. Okay, hopefully that helped. If you guys have questions, please post them into the Devtoberfest issues and somebody will be assigned to look at that issue and reply back to you. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, bye.